Hi everyone, it's Tess from teachwithtess.com. Welcome to my channel. It's so nice to see you back again. I'm here I'm doing this really quickly before teaching in 25 minutes. I've just been talking to Sharon a, who's a Wales English teacher and she's been sharing her experience about the new start course that Wales English has recently launched to huge fanfare and great success with the parents. So if you're interested in this course, wondering whether or not it's something you'd like to teach and whether to do the training for it or if you're a teacher wanting to join Wales English and because you have experience teaching young kids this will be for you don't forget to get in contact with me um, below you've got my website links you can find out all the information you need about Wales English if you're wanting to apply I'd be happy to help remember on this channel you'll find out everything you need to know about Wales English teaching online and of course working from home and if you find the content helpful I'd really appreciate that you smash the like button and you subscribe because it helps me know that I'm making content relevant for you anyway that's enough of my waffle let's hear from Sharon o, who's joined us this morning um, here she is. So Sharon, okay. it's great to see you here today. Thanks so much for popping by. And we're going to be talking about the new starter course that Wales English has just launched. And I've picked on you today because you're now world famous in the Wales community, <laughs> having a perfect five in your evaluation of the class. And Wales have been very proud, or Wales has been very proud, putting your video and your demo out there so we can all benefit from your teaching style. So I thought it would be great to get you in here and just sort of ask you a few more questions. But do you just want to introduce yourself and say how long you've been with Wales and how long you've been teaching and things like that to give us a bit of background? Oh, thank you, Tess, and thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to meet you as well. <laughs> and yeah, so I've been with Wales today, actually, two years and... Before that, I've been teaching in a public school. So I taught in a public school for four years and then now with Wales, two years. So I have six years of experience. Yeah, um, yeah that's what I do. I love teaching with Wales. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely amazing because before I taught with Wales, I got married with a farmer. So I live on a farm very, very far from a public school. So online was the next best thing. And yes, I was very honored and very pleased to be accepted with Wales. And I'm just having an absolute blast with them. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? <laughs> so tell me, can you tell me a little bit or tell us all, how did you get into teaching the starter course? How so that that's... That's actually, I was asked to be a trainer for the new starter course. And then after that, I was also just said, okay, you're now going to teach the starter course, which is amazing because I love the little ones. Mm -hmm. I actually, um, I graduated to teach high school children. Yeah. So before Wales, I taught high school children. And since teaching with Wales, I was like, I need to teach smaller kids because <laughs> I have a lot of energy and I'm very enthusiastic. And sometimes the older kids, when you make a joke, they just stare at you. Yeah. They don't Too understand. Cool. Yeah. But the little ones, they are so cute. So they laugh with you and they sing and they clap their hands and they jump up and down. So that's how I became a starter course teacher, but I absolutely love it. I would recommend that yeah. amongst the others because especially if you are an energetic teacher and you love the little ones because they are super adorable. Um, yeah. Oh, I think that's fantastic. It's interesting what you've just said there about the fact that you graduated as a high school teacher. I did too. I've wow. never taught little ones before joining Wales. And yeah, I think me maybe neither. this is quite an important point to put out there for people who do come from uh, a background where they've taught older students. It does not mean yeah. that you can't teach and enjoy the little ones no of course not. Of I mean teaching, isn't it yes of course you just need to go that get that inner child mm. of yourself <laughs> and just let it explode <laughs> yeah absolutely I so agree with you now tell me so so you mentioned a little bit what is it specifically that you like about the starter course is it its format it's teaching those little ones what tell us a little bit about what you like so I course. actually prefer the starter course because I feel it's very interactive. Mm -hmm. um, all the sounds and the colors, it draws the children's attention 
to the screen. Sometimes you get a little one that would, wants to wander off or they turn their screen off and on. And, but the, the course itself is very interactive yeah. in sense that you can also extend so much. Mm. Um, I've had smaller kids before where the one little girl, she didn't want to say a word. She didn't want to say a sentence. And I figured, okay, but she likes singing. And yeah. with this new starter course, there's lots of singing involved and you can do that short sentences. Like last time I said to the, um, the one student, I'm like, what do you have? What do you have? And she started to jumping. She said, I have dinosaurs, jump, jump, jump. So the moment you, <laughs> you engage them with things that they like, like this mm -hmm. one, she liked singing and then she just popped out. She was, um, attentive in class. She's interactive. Mm -hmm. So I feel that the course is, there's so many room to extend in ways like mm -hmm. that. Be creative and um, draw the children's attention with enthusiasm, with energy, with colors, with props. So mm -hmm. that's what I like most about this starter course. And also I feel the amount of material for the 25 minute time that we have, there's more than enough. There's mm. not too much. There's not too little. You can do so much with one slide to mm. um, keep up with the rest of the slides. And you can also do so little with one slide. So that's just the me. I love it. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> jealous of you. I was saying before we started this interview that uh, I have no more space on my schedule to teach the little ones. And I used, so I used to have loads of ESC, the, the, the first starter course that they've just phased out. And I miss it because I loved 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 Aww. teaching that age group and it was so rewarding seeing the progress i've made very especially when they renew with you mm -hmm. so you see them from the start yeah. where they can only repeat after you and then they start repeating sentences and then they start completing their own sentences so it's very rewarding i do completely understand oh it's fantastic isn't it so tell me what um what sort of techniques do you use to engage these young learners you've mentioned obviously song and energy but you know as somebody who's consistently getting such great evaluations in your classes Sharon you obviously have nailed how to do this well <laughs> maybe it would be great if you have some little techniques and tips that you could share about keeping them engaged so I know that props is very essential. Mm -hmm. They, the children, because sometimes they don't even focus on the slides. They look at you. Mm -hmm. So if you're just going to sit there, have no props with you, like here, I have example for this when I want them to say something or just to draw their attention because they are so small. They don't always focus on what they have on the screen, but they rather focus on the clown in front of them. So have your props ready. Um, that's very, very essential, especially when you want to recap at the end of the, the lesson and you want to know because sometimes the, the images are so small. And again, they don't focus on the slides, they look at you. So if you pop up some of the pictures you have or just the hearts and stars, I do this with them when they get rewards, I say they can eat the star or they can catch the star. Just do something to keep their attention with you and not always necessarily on the slides or want them to focus on the slides. Mm, that's a really good point actually, because you, you're right. They often, they look at you, they want to engage yeah. you. They do, yeah, that's absolutely bang on. Um, what about challenges? What do you find the most, com not complicated, what do you find the most difficult uh, in t with teaching a young learners and a course that you've never seen before? Because this is, of course, brand new and it's just been launched by Wales. So, you know, you're learning the course as you go through it because you've never taught it before. Yeah. What sort of advice could you offer teachers who are new to this level, new to this course? So I know one of the big challenges I have is incorporating peer-to-peer -peer interaction because they are so small and they don't know what it, what it, that is. So mm -hmm. I'm very lucky. I have a boy and a girl and most of the slides, they have two characters. They have a boy and a girl and they switch when they do peer-to-peer -peer interaction. But I would always use my little props like this if you can see them. I have my little girl and my little boy, but I also have two girls and two boys just with different colors. And then I would always show that to them and I would, I would model for them to ask a question and I will also model them 
for them to answer the question. So first they would repeat after me and maybe for the first three to four to five lessons, they would only repeat, but then they would catch the drift. If you use your little props yeah. to show them and ask them to, for I have two students, let's say, hmm, can you please um, ask Cece or whatever this question? I'm like, oh, Bradley, can you say, Cece, what do you have? And then this one, Cece, can you say, so just get them to repeat mm -hmm. after you and then in the end, they will catch it. So mm -hmm. that is one of the biggest challenges I have. Mm -hmm. And also I have one student turning his camera on and off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so he would say like, bye. And I'm like, no, not bye, come back. And then what I do is I turn my camera off as well. So I'd say, oh, bye. <laughs> and I turn the camera off and they're like, teacher, teacher. <laughs> so <laughs> you just, I think you just need to get to know your students, see what they are interested in, see what they see mm -hmm. for fun or what they want to do for fun, because that way you will get them to like you yeah. and they would start be in interactive in the classroom. Yeah. I think yeah. that is the most or the biggest challenges I have. I know some other teachers have other challenges, but that's the challenges I have in class. Yeah, I'm just thinking what the sort of chance. I think sometimes it can be another thing I notice teaching this very low level is the need to show a lot of patience because you can get yeah. some of them who are really shy and who don't speak. You know, and it can take them several lessons yeah. for you to draw them out of their shell and for them to trust you and start interacting with you. I think I think yeah. patience is 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 also something can that can really, really help. And what you were saying earlier about getting to know your children when you teach them, I mean, this goes for any level, obviously. Yeah absolutely essential because that's how you get to them and that's how it's remembering those little things that they like taking down notes birthdays all yes that is very very important I mean patience is a very key part for teaching mm -hmm. these these young ones um if they don't want to speak they're not going to speak yeah. so you just need to as I said, see what they are interested in. Mm -hmm. Maybe get a toy. Let's say, for example, the one loves turtles. Get a turtle. Exactly. Get the turtles to talk in class. Maybe not the first two <laughs> or three times they won't even talk. But after that, they would maybe say, oh, hello, turtle. And then that way they would start to interact in the class. Yeah. And often, often they'll talk. I mean, I've got my little rabbit. I have many, many toys. My inner child loves <laughs> online teaching. But yeah. this little rabbit is a massive favorite. It's, you know, and, and again, if children don't want to speak to you, sometimes they'll just speak to the rabbit. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there's something different. They're looking at this and not me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I know most of them love rabbits. Um, if they don't love rabbits, they love cats. So those are two props that I would definitely have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I got my monkey and my toucan and you can't see them. They're off camera, but I have this They're child. so cute. And, and I, I see also... Peppa Pig, big favorite. <laughs> Peppa Pig, yeah. That yeah. came from a neighbor who was emptying her daughter's room. Oh, that's so, so cute. Want... Yeah, I'll have it. Oh, that's you're, so cute. You're quite old. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, what? Well. <laughs> Well, I'm a teacher. I'm an online teacher. I need to have those things. I need toys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? All these inner, oh, collect toys again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had another question for you, Sharon. I'm trying to remember what it was. I know for people or for the teachers watching, they're thinking, but I'm, I haven't got that sort of energy or I don't have experience with children this age. How do I start? What do I do? Do you think everybody's able to dig deep and find the sort of energy and teaching style necessary to do this? Or do you think there are some teachers who probably should just feel absolutely fine about saying, no, it's not for me? That's actually a very difficult question because I know if you Sorry. are not, no, no, not at all. If you're not an enthusiastic yeah. or energetic teacher, you are going to struggle yeah. to keep the children's attention first of all and also maybe give a successful class because mm -hmm. if they're not going to find any interest in you because they are so small they mm -hmm. want you to be funny they don't want a puppet just sitting like that 
not doing anything yeah. like this. They want to interact with you. So that's a very, very difficult question. Mm -hmm. I think nothing is impossible. It's nothing to give it a try. I mean, if you try to do it and you see, mm -hmm. okay, this is not for me, I can't do it, then mm -hmm. it's okay. But I don't think one should just give up and say, oh no, I'm not like that, mm -hmm. I can't do that. I mm -hmm. Just give it a try. I think mm -hmm. if you have your own children, Surely you are like a clown with them. So <laughs> I think that you would be a clown anyway. I don't say that just be a jumping jack and jump all over the place, mm -hmm. but just use your voice because that's a different mm -hmm. way of getting them to be attentive in class. Use mm -hmm. your voice in different stages. Just don't just be monotone and talk with one way, speak mm -hmm. one voice. That's just going, not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as I said, nothing's impossible. Um, it is a very difficult thing. But if you just if you just give yourself a chance and start and see, OK, maybe I can do this, get a proper to yeah. see if the children like that, see if you can talk with a puppet in your hand yeah. and don't feel awkward in front of the camera with that. And then I just said, go for it. Nothing's going to stop you. It's just you that need to just. Mm. yeah just make that mind shift yeah yeah no i agree and also i mean for people who are not certain you know if you start teaching the trial new trials exactly. theory, that gives you a taster doesn't it to see yes exactly you like to do or not yes exactly i mean that's the selling point for the starter yeah. course so that is where you need to be on top of it. If yeah. you see, okay, well, this works for me, then you can say, okay, just put that tag on me. I can take the regular yeah. classes. Um, but that's a very good step. I mean, if you do the trial classes, you'll see. Can you do it? Can you not? <laughs> and, and move on up. <laughs> move on, yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and, and, and to be honest, you know, as I was saying earlier that I now have no more space in my timetable to, to teach that level because I have taught, I started teaching ESC when I started with Wales 18 months ago. And wow. the majority of my kids have all renewed. So I'm on the third renewal for most of my classes. Yes, so, and they most probably will renew anyways after that too. So your schedule is going to be stuck with that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm and so I've just sorry had two for more you. It's renew. So third. Yeah, two more. For but renewal. it's amazing if they renew with you. I mean, I have Lovely. little ones that I have on a Friday. I am on their fourth course. <gasps> so I had them at the beginning when I started and I still have them. It's amazing. It's amazing to see the progress. But yeah. I do agree it's very fun to have the little ones. And I know that mm -hmm. um, having a full schedule and you can't do that, it's, it's quite sad. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. never mind right so to finish because we're both busy and i know you've got to teach and serve i fairly soon um she says looking at the clock <laughs> what tips would you send to people out there watching this your top i don't know top five tips to be a fantastic starter course teacher so i think first of all props again that is very yes props 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 exactly here we go i have my little panda here oh and i have an egg huh yes this egg this is a toy egg i i get my children all the time and i drop the egg and like oh teacher and i'm like oh no the egg so props <laughs> props is very very good props energy um that is a very, very good point. Energy, you need to have energy. You need to raise your voice in different ways. Um, yeah. Number three, you need to be mm -hmm. interactive. You need to be mm -hmm. attentive to the students' needs, mm -hmm. not only to, because you need to adapt the lesson material to their level. Sometimes they are in a starter course and their level is much lower actually because they just started speaking English. So you need to adapt to their needs. Yeah. That is a very important point. See what they, um, where you can improve. Is it pronunciation? Is it completing sentences? Is it- And is it, is it also, sorry to interrupt, that's just- No. Me. Is it also being exceptionally concise with TP and using TPR? Because we haven't exactly. talked about TPR massively. We didn't actually, that's a very <laughs> good point. Realized, but yeah. TPR is essential with this level. It is super essential. Like I said in one of my trainings, sometimes when I ask the, the students to read and I do this, um, not all of them understand what this is. Like, what is this? So again, have a prop. Yeah. have a book with you and then show them that you want them to read. So um, TPR is very important, cupping your ear, um, showing to your mouth that you're talking and they need to listen and then 
you want them to talk mm -hmm. and then again i have this if they don't understand this i do this for yeah. them to speak so that's actually i can't <laughs> actually believe we didn't speak about Anybody that but edit this video this i know reference <laughs> tpr <laughs> very important <laughs> yes exactly and also last but not least patience yeah patience 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 um yeah, I mean, you can't rush anything. If the child doesn't know how to pronounce dinosaurs now and he doesn't know how to pronounce di dinosaurs in the next lesson, you need to recap on that, even if yeah. that's not in the lesson. I mean, yeah. they can't just move forward and say, oh, I learned about dinosaurs, but I can't no. pronounce the name correctly. So that's very important. Oh, uh, yeah, you've sold it to me. I have to say, <laughs> uh, just talking to you about it, I'm just going, oh, I miss that level. <laughs> they I are so cute. So much. <laughs> They are so cute. I because my name is so long, so usually they don't remember my name. So I have my letter here, and I'm just teacher C. Oh, and that is so nice when they come. Hello, teacher C. Oh, that is so cute. <laughs> and as they renew, they get an extra syllable. Shop. Yeah. Yeah, Shaw. Hello, Teacher Shaw. <laughs> I've been so many names, so I just said C. Teacher C is fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so great. I really appreciate this chat, Sharon. And I really hope that people who are wondering about this course will find it helpful and, and make them under well, help them understand that this is something that is accessible to most. I know from a fact from talking with whales themselves that it's something that they're pushing massively with parents. Yeah got a huge success, amount of success so I think people who decide to teach this clocks class will have their schedules fill quite quickly as well yeah sure sure so, um, I mean if you just think about it that sorry the demand is with the smaller kids because um, the parents do want their kids to learn English from a very very young age yeah. and I mean I'm amazed with some of the students that's very young and how good they I mean how good they can speak that it's just mind-blowing so I can just see the gap there. So if you can teach this and you want to teach this, I would say just go for it. It's very fun. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Sharon, a, thank you so very much for coming today. I've absolutely loved talking to you and catching up again. And um, I'll see you around at Wales English soon online. And um, yeah. have good lessons today. Take thank care. Thank you. You too. It was very nice to see you, Kat. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks so much. <laughs>